I have the I have this Ainsley circuit running, and what I've done is I'm using this one ohm inductive shunt, and I have the negative of the timer circuit, this green wire here, going to the negative of the um, the load shunt as well. So with this one shunt, I'm simultaneously measuring load draw and timer draw with the one shunt. Okay, and the purpose of this um, video is basically to show this timer and load are both going through that one ohm shunt okay and right here I have the yellow the yellow is the um, grounded at the drain and the positive of the probe is at the um, sorry it's grounded at the source and the positive of the probe of the yellow channel is on the drain of the MOSFET and what this is just showing is that the switch is turning off and on and it's kind of oscillating in this uh, ringing style. The blue is basically the shunt showing that it's drawing one and a half DC average with an RMS of about four and a quarter average. So if I take 4.25 millivolts and divide it by say about one and a half DC average 1.5 okay that's about a 2.8 time spread not very much but the point of this test is that okay here's the waveform across the load with the fluke connected to the negative then the probe probe is across the positive totally separate uh, scope and it's averaging a negative more than positive which means there's more power leaving the coil than going in um, and right now I'm also at let's see the load is 24.8 and ambient is 24.5 so it's three tenths of a Celsius above ambient not a big deal but here's um, what I think is pretty cool is that this is um, bursts of oscillations broken and when you really zoom in to see what what it looks like um, basically you get all this ringing all the way across okay symmetrical ringing on the top and bottom they're about equal but it's a little bit more negative than positive of course I'd have to do a data dump from this thing or do it on the Tektronix to show that um, but the point is this MOSFET is oscillating the load is running really good okay and what I'm going to do is this negative here is going to the negative rail of the timer I'm not using the separate shunt because I have the ground going to this same shunt measuring the power at the same time this negative rail right here is the negative of the battery to the timer. This yellow wire is going into the diode, into the uh, positive uh, rail of the timer. And so if I disconnect this, okay, first of all, if you look at the scope, I'm at the DC average being drawn between the load and the timer is around one and a half millivolts. Okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this yellow wire from the circuit which is the positive power okay and you can see that I did in fact disconnect it because this DC average right here for the blue for the power shunt and timer shunt simultaneously is now only showing less than one millivolt averaging about half a millivolt so if we're at about a two and a half to two point eight times spread before between the, mean, the DC and the RMS on the shunt right now we have about three and a half three point seven five to four so I'll say three point seven five RMS divided by about five hundred uh, microvolts so 0 0.5 millivolts so that's about a seven and a half time spread a lot better but um, this isn't to show just power draws uh, that's the shunt that's across the um, MOSFET uh, drain or uh, source to drain showing that it's triggering and look at this the MOSFET is in full self oscillation it's oscillating it's switching off and on it's in full self oscillation all by itself with no power from the timer I just connected the negative rail of the timer too so the positive and the negative is not even connected to the timer the only thing that's connected to the timer circuit uh, to the cir to, from the timer circuit to the regular MOSFET circuit is this green wire going to the gate which is going into this pot for gate adjustment and then the, uh, then the input of the pot is going down to pin number three on the timer circuit that's the only connection to the circuit and um, so the positive negative are disconnected the MOSFET is in full oscillation all by itself self triggering self timed 
and the switching is self-powered. No timer circuit required. And I'm getting heat. Now it's up to 24.9. And I'm working on less than one millivolt. Okay, so for anybody who believes that the oscillation is all about the timer, well, it's not. I mean, this is not saying that the timer is not able to oscillate or isn't causing the oscillations at some times, but that doesn't mean that the MOSFET is not, oscill is not able to oscillate by itself, and this proves that it is. I mean, there's, there's no power even going to the timer circuit right now. It's disconnected from any power supply, and it's oscillating. Oscillating very nice, and it's averaging more in a negative voltage, but this negative voltage doesn't mean it's going to run cold. This just means more energy is coming out than going in. This is going to determine on the load whether it's running on a positive power or negative power, and this is running on a positive power, which means there should be heat. So anyway, um, this is just in a microvolt range compared to that. Full self oscillation at the MOSFET. Just ringing like a bell. And if I disconnect this wire from pin number three, okay, that's pin number three right there, totally disconnected from the circuit. This is self-oscillating. That's the MOSFET.